suppose we have a converging sequence. Let's say uh, I go n and I go n. This sequence converges to somebody. As n goes to infinity, then it will converge to, let's say, this guy here. Okay? If that's the case, this sequence is necessarily bounded above and below. However, even if a sequence is bounded, it doesn't imply that it will converge. For example, if a sequence just oscillates between uh, 0 and 1, let's say, it keeps oscillating forever, and it will never converge. But still, it's, it's bounded. So we cannot, in this case, we cannot define the limit of this sequence, but we can always define something called limit superior or limit inferior for any bounded sequence. So what are they? We start from a review of some basic notions. First, let's uh, review the definition of upper bound and lower bound. Okay, suppose S is a subset of real number S. Okay, and let's say alpha is a real number. Then, uh, for all member of this subset X, if uh, alpha is greater than or equal to that member, then we say alpha is an upper bound. Uh, upper bound, uh, bound of the set S. On the other hand, if alpha is always less than or equal to X, then we say alpha is a lower bound of S. Again, let's consider some uh, hypothetical sequence of real numbers. So this is n natural number, and go n. So if we have a sequence like this, uh, any value so let's suppose this sequence is bounded between some values. And uh, so any numbers that is above the greatest uh, element of this sequence is an upper bound. Okay. So if the sequence does not exceed that value, then that value is an upper bound. And similarly, if the sequence does not go below that value, and that value is called a lower bound. Okay, so there are infinitely many upper bounds and infinitely many lower bounds. And of course, some sequences are not bounded. So in, for example, uh, if a sequence diverges to positive infinity, then there is no upper bound. If a sequence diverges to negative infinity, it has no lower bound. Next, we review the definition of supremum and infinitum. And here again, suppose S is a subset of real numbers. And then, uh, if this, is, this set is bounded above, then we can define the set, let's say U of S, where alpha is an upper bound. Of S. Okay, so that means, so this is a set of upper bounds of S. Uh, for all elements in S, alpha is greater than or equal to X. So this is a set of the set of upper bounds. Then the supremum of this set S is defined as the lower, the lowest, the minimum of upper bounds. And consider a sequence of real numbers. Go 
n and uh, suppose this is bounded above okay so there are infinitely many upper bounds and the lowest of which is the supreme one of uh, the series in this case and the infimum of s is defined similarly so we define the set of lower bounds of s that is uh, for all x in s alpha is less than x okay. so this is the set of lower bounds and the infimum of s is defined as the maximum of the maximum element of this set of lower bounds so roughly speaking supremum the supremum of the set s is kind of like the maximum value of that set okay but not exactly the maximum because the set s may not contain that upper bound itself okay so it may converge to some value that is very close to some uh, the supremum of s but uh, not exactly in that case it's not exactly the maximum of the set s but it is the it is the minimum of the upper bound okay and same for infimum okay it is roughly it is something like the minimum value of the set s but it's not exactly the minimum because the set s may not contain exactly the value of uh, inf inf infimum of s but it is the maximum value of the lower bounds. Next, let's consider a sequence of real numbers that are that is bounded. Okay, then for any natural number n, we def for this sequence we define uh, a upper bar n and a n a lower bar n as follows so a n upper bar is defined as the supremum of k greater than n and a k which means this supremum of this set a k where k is greater than or equal to the given n and a lower bar n is the infimum k greater than or equal to n which is the infimum of the set of subsequence a k where k is greater than or equal to the given n so what they mean is this uh, again consider a sequence so we have uh, this sequence okay so when n is equal to 1 then here k is greater than or equal to 1 so if this is n equal to 1 and 2 and so on 5 and so on then we take the supremum of all these values When n is equal to 2, then k must be great, greater than or equal to 2. So we just ignore this first element and consider only this part. Then find the supremum. When n is equal to 3, we ignore the first two elements and consider the supremum only for this subset. So we continue this for any n. And the same applies to uh, this lower bar, a n. So when n is equal to, say, 2, then we first uh, equal to 3, let's say. We ignore the first two elements and consider the infimum of only this subset. So it, you should notice that as n goes larger and larger, then we ignore more elements from, uh, from the head of this sequence 
So that means the supremum only decreases. Okay? It doesn't increase. Or maybe it can stay, stay, stay the same, but it will never increase because we ignore more and more elements from this set. So there will be less larger elements. Okay? So for example, in an in a extreme case, the first element may be the largest element. So if we ignore this, So when n is equal to 1, then this, is, this will be uh, a1 itself. If, if, if we assume a1 is the largest element of the sequence. But uh, a2 upper bar, from this uh, we ignore the first element. So it is, uh, it, it must be less than a1, which is a1 bar. Okay, so this can apply, uh, the same argument applies to any uh, other element. So this a n upper bar only decreases or maybe stay the same. So in general, we have uh, a1 upper bar is greater than or equal to a2 upper bar which is greater than or equal to a3 upper bar, and so on. By a similar argument, we can see that a1 lower bar is less than a2 lower bar, which is less than a3 lower bar, and so on. So this a n lower bar only increases as n goes larger and larger. And of course, in general, we can uh, see that a lower bar n is less than or equal to a n itself, which is less than or equal to a n upper bar. Because this is the supremum and this is the infimum, so a n must be in between. So by assumption, this sequence is bounded. Okay, this a n is bounded, this bounded sequence. And uh, so therefore, this a upper bar, this sequence is also bounded. And a lower bar, this sequence is also bounded. And consider this one first. Uh, so this is bounded and monotone decreasing sequence. Therefore, this sequence of a n upper bar is converges. So, you know, uh, bounded and monotone increasing or decreasing sequence, they always converge. So this converges. And similarly, a lower bar n also converges. Converges. So, based on this observation, we define limit superior. n goes to infinity of the sequence a n. So we define this to be limit n goes to infinity and supremum of k greater than or equal to n a k, which is limit of, so by the definition of this, uh, we have this a n upper bar. Okay, so this limit exists because it's monotone decreasing. And similarly, we define limit inferior a n as the limit n goes to infinity and infimum k greater than or equal to n a k, which is actually the limit n going to infinity and a lower bar. And as we said before, this limit does exist because uh, we are assuming a n is bounded, so a underbar is also bounded, and this is monotone increasing. Therefore, the limit exists. So these limits superior and limit inferior they are well defined. So here, the only assumption was that the sequence a n is bounded. Okay. So even if 
the sequence does not converge to any value, any finite value, we can still define limit superior and limit inferior. So any bounded sequence has limit superior and limit inferior. Uh, by the way, in some math books, limit superior is written this way. Uh, instead of lim sup, uh, it's written lim upper bound. And similarly, li uh, limit inferior is sometimes written lim under bound. Uh, goes to infinity. Um, so they are the same thing. It's just a matter of notations. Okay, let's see a few examples. Uh, consider uh, this sequence. A n equals to negative 1 to the power of n plus 1. So that means a0 is negative 1, and a1 is 1, and a2 is negative 1, and so on. So this sequence oscillates between negative 1 and positive 1, and it, it does not converge. However, we still have limit superior. That is positive 1, and limit inferior. Uh, that is negative 1. And next example, consider uh, the sequence a n negative 1 to the power of n over n. Okay, so if we plot the sequence, it oscillates between a positive value and negative value. So when n is equal to 0, it's uh, n cannot be equal to 0, n should start from 1. Uh, that is negative 1. And when n is equal to 2, that is positive 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 is negative 1. So it will oscillate. But the amplitude will just decrease. Okay, and it, it converges to 0. Uh, in this case, limit superior of this an is 0, and limit inferior is also 0. By the way, in this case, the limit of the sequence also exists, and that is 0. So limit superior, limit inferior, and limit, they all converge to the same value. Zero. Uh, the next example is a bit abstract. Uh, suppose we have a sequence that is bounded and monotone increasing. So that is uh, it's bounded but monotone increasing. That goes down. Okay. So since there is a, it's bounded, uh, we have the lowest upper bound of A. Okay, so N is all natural number. If this is the case, then we have, this is actually also equal to uh, limit superior. And this is also equal to limit inferior. because it's monotone increasing. So if we just ignore the first uh, terms, then the lower bound of the remaining terms will just increase and increase until it reaches the same value as uh, the supremum of this sequence. So therefore, we have this equal to this, and this equal to this, of course. And that's it. Uh, see you later.